Hello, I am Pastor Ernest L. Dees with Agape Holistic Life Changing Ministries. I am humbled and honored to share with you what thus says the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. We adore you. We magnify you this day. Lord God, we are praying, O oh God, that a word will fall on somebody's heart, O oh God, and take root and grow therein. Father, we ask you to direct our paths, O oh God, and bring someone closer to you. This we pray now and we thank you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen. We want to read in your hearing today our scripture lesson coming from a very familiar passage of scripture. We've been talking about the book of Ephesians uh, for a minute now. And we're going to read chapter 4, verse 1 through 7 from the New King James Version. It reads on this wise, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. With all lowliness, and gentleness with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. But to each one of us was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for the reading of his word, and may the Lord bless it abundantly. Now, as you know, we've been talking about the book of Ephesians, and there is so much good in this book. And I just want to kind of just kind of let my hair down a little bit tonight and just talk about some nuts and bolts of how God's word can really bless us. Um, in this book and going forward, there are three topics that we want to talk about. Number one, walking in unity and spiritual gifts. Number two, shining for Jesus in everyday living. And number three, wholesome relationships and Christian armor. Tonight, our overall Bible study, uh, we are talking about unity in the body of Christ. Unity in the body of Christ. Now, <clears throat> as we look at this book, when we look at the scriptures, before we even get into reading it, I was pondering and I was thinking, and I was thinking that the Word of God really is a great road map. It helps us in our everyday living. There are a number of maps that help people to get where they need to go. But the problem is they either don't know how to read the map or they don't read the map. I also thought about a scripture in the book of Acts around chapter 17, verse 21, how it was talking about the Athenians, how they loved to have something new to talk about, or they want to hear something new. And I thought about the Word of God that we already have. Do we need something new, or do we need to digest what we already have? You know, there are people that have itching ears, just want to have something to talk about, a, a, a shiny new thing. But there's much 
of God's word that we already have. And I'm a firm believer if we can digest this word, just like food, just like regular food, you can ingest, just take it in, but if your body doesn't digest it, you won't get the proper nutrients and nourishment that you need. Um, when we eat food, that food helps us to be strong. It gives us energy. It helps to ward off uh, all kind of the onslaught of all kind of illnesses, etc. Well, if we really take in the word of God, and I'm hoping to, that you will see what I'm talking about as we go through the lesson tonight. If we can go through the word of God and let the word of God actually talk to us, it will help us navigate through this world all the way to glory. I want to just mention this real quick, like, and that is, I remember not too long ago, I was depending on my GPS to get me where I needed to go. And I believe on one Sunday recently, one of our elders was talking about the GPS. And he was talking about God's uh, positioning system, the word of God. But now, I was depending on my GPS. The GPS told me to go a certain direction. And I said, I said, now, why in the world would that GPS want to send me in that direction, another direction, other than what I knew it should have been sending me in, or at least I thought? And so I said, you know what? I'm not going to do what this GPS tells me to do. I'm going to go the way I know is a way to get where I'm going. And lo and behold, undoubtedly, so to speak, the GPS could see what I couldn't see. Down the road was a, was a, a, a parking lot. Cars almost everywhere. I couldn't have to move. And no doubt the GPS was sending me all around all that traffic so I could get to where I want to go in a timely manner. So I'm saying to us with the word of God, the word of God so oftentimes direct our path. But then we get so smart sometimes and think we can outsmart God's word. And you know one thing, I don't really have to do all that. But God's word, God can see around corners. God can see in the dark. God can see tomorrow while it's, amen, still today. So I'm asking you to just sort of uh, trust God's word. And let's look at this, the fourth chapter. I want to start on the fourth chapter tonight, and we can move forward and until we complete. And we may have to go another Wednesday night. But look at this. Paul now saying, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord, I beg you, to walk worthy of the calling with which you're called. I want to emphasize what calling have we been called? Who called us? God called us. We find in Romans 1 and 7, it teaches us that we are called to be saints. We are called to be the people of God, chosen of God. God called us. So doesn't that mean something? So if God see fit enough to call you and accept you as a friend, that's, a, that's mighty powerful, mighty important. And watch this now. Then it goes on to say, with all lowliness and gentleness. With all lowliness and gentleness. Now, I want to kind of emphasize that just a little bit, and I may read a little bit of that from um, the NLT version, just to kind of get you a different perspective on it. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. 
but to think soberly. As God has dealt to each one a measure of faith with a long suffering, bearing with one another in love. Now, I want to read that from the NLT as well, give you kind of a different perspective. We're talking about unity in the body of Christ. And here in this uh, fourth chapter of Ephesians, backed up by Romans, etc., God is trying to teach us something. If, if, if we're going to have a unity in the body of Christ, we're going to have to try to find good ways and positive ways to interact with one another and not be stuck on ourselves. Listen. Listen how the NLT said, because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. And this is coming from Paul, someone who, who have rubbed his head, so to speak, against uh, uh, the master's wall with education, learning uh, at the feet of Gamaliel, learning the law. And, not, and he was humbled because he was, became blind, fell off, knocked off or fell off his, his animal that he was on, on the, on the Damascus road. God got his attention. And now he's saying he can speak with some sort of authority because he has been humbled. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us, endeavoring, that is striving, to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. We'll, we're trying to follow peace with all men as much as possible. Um, let that bond, that peaceful bond and with the Holy Spirit of God uh, unify us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to this. Then it goes on to say there is one body, one spirit, just as you were called in hope, in one hope of your calling. I'm hoping that one of these days, that we can spend eternity with Jesus Christ. I'm looking forward to that. And I tell you something, there is absolutely nothing on this earth that can compare to what God has in store for us. So why compromise? Why compromise? You know, when I was coming up, they often told me, why settle for hamburger when you can have steaks? So I'm saying to you, God got the best for you. Uh, so we can just hold on to what God has for us right now and keep the faith. Listen at this. Then it goes on to say, God is above all and through all and in you all. Now, when we're talking about that one spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13 tells us, for by one spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, we were all baptized into one body. And that body, that body is a body of Christ, which is the church. Now, uh, we, let's keep in mind that Paul is talking man, to the, 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 the people of God there in Ephesus. Let's move on down. It says now, Therefore, I, a prisoner of Christ, serving the Lord, he begged you to stay humble. I've already gone over that. Let me move on down a little bit more. Verse 11, talking about the gifts. Now, these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. And I'm so thankful because each one of these gifts I'm going to mention. There are plenty of other gifts, but I'm just going to mention these. God doesn't make or do anything just to be idle. Everything God does, he did it for a reason. Um, someone says, you know, I know I'm somebody because God don't make no trash. So I'm saying if God did it, it must be for a good purpose. Now watch this. These are the gifts that Christ gave to the church. He gave the apostles, the prophets, 
evangelists, and pastors, and teachers. Now, what were their responsibility? What were these people supposed to do? Now, Jesus Christ started the church. Now I'm going to put something in the church. I'm going to give the church some gifts that's going to help build my church. And everything that God put in the church, there's a reason for it. It's significant. It's a need. Listen, and here's what I want them to do. To equip God's people. So therefore, in, in terms of equipping, we got to teach them. Yes, we preach, lead them. And then goes on to say, and build up the church, which is the body of Christ. I want not only build it up uh, numerically, but yes, build it up numerically too. That's the same thing that Jesus Christ was talking about in Matthew 28, 19, and 20. I want you to go and teach, preach, teach, evangelize, build the church in quality, build the church in quantity. And these are, these are some specific gifts that God put in the church. Now, this will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's son that we will be mature in the Lord. Now, God put this in the church he wants us to be mature. There's a reason for that. And he's going to tell us specifically why he wants this to happen. Because, like I said, God can see around corners. He can see tomorrow, today. Measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Now, that's going to take some time. That's going to take some doing. But, we can work on this until Jesus comes or either he calls us home. Because every day, every day is a brand new day to make strides toward becoming all of what God wants us to become. Now, look at verse 14. And I love this so much. Then we will no longer be immature. God wants to take us from being immature to maturity. And there's a reason for this. Everything God does, there's a reason for it. Watch this. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. This is important. This is why we need the teaching. This is why we need teachers and pastors, apostles, evangelists, prophets in the church. Because otherwise, we wouldn't know what to believe. We, every time we hear something, we, we were thinking, well, maybe, maybe this is the, is the truth. Maybe this is the truth. But God has put in his church what's needed. Listen at this. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever, they, they sound like the truth. If we become mature, but the thing about it is, is getting people to actually ingest God's word, take it in, and then study it, learn it, so we can digest God's word. And when we digest God's word, it, it, will, it will give us strength, it will give us stability. It will help us move forward. It will help us to navigate through life. It will help us to deal with everyday problems. It will help us to deal with our children. It will help us to deal with our wife, our spouse, everything. God's word is one of the best medicines anybody ever can take because it's, it's, it's for your whole self. Now listen. Instead, we will speak the truth in love. Now, sometimes the truth hurts, and you know that. But he said, but Paul said it now, but we're going to speak the truth in love because we know it's going to hurt sometimes. It's not going to feel good sometimes. It's not going to taste good sometimes. 
But a real friend will tell you the truth even if it hurts your feelings temporarily. Listen, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. It helps the other part grow. And that's just what we were saying earlier. It helps it to grow. So that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. I want you to picture that in your mind. We are, we are feasting at the gospel table. We're eating it and we are digesting the word of God. And then we, can, we can go out and be strong. And when we hear things that, that is not in alignment with God's word, we can say, nope, you know what? I've been eating fish and throwing away the bones. That sounds like bones to me. I'm going to throw it away. And, but you know when you get hold to some good fish, I'm going to eat the fish and throw away the bones. And you can do that because now you have been growing in God's word. I love it so much. We can live as lights for Jesus Christ in this world right here. We can live as lights, shine brightly for Jesus. Especially when we are guided and directed by the word of God. When we are filled with his Holy Spirit. Verse 17. With the Lord's authority, I say this. And here's one of those direct things. Direct words, direct encouragement, direct admonishment. Live no longer as the Gentiles. Now, I'm going to tell you, according to Paul here, what he said about them. There's a difference. And it's the difference that makes the difference. You know, I want you, I want you to think about this. If any and everybody, regardless of how they live, everything, you can go to heaven, what kind of, what, what would be the need to go to heaven? And we got the same thing right here. Now listen, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They want to fall from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and harden their hearts against, against him. There is a distinct difference between those that are born again and those that are not born again. Jesus Christ loves all of us, and he wants all of us to be born again. He, he has given us the invitation to come live with him throughout eternity. But he wants peace in his heaven, in his home. Don't you want peace in your home? He wants peace in his home. He wants harmony. He wants love there. And how can he have that if he allows all of this to infiltrate heaven and our home? So, so he, he's making a distinct difference. Now, if I said I was a child of God and I was supposed to be a light, and every, every bad thing that you can think of, I was doing it. I was highballing, rolling, doing everything. And yes, I said, I'm a child of God. How could I shine? How could I show a difference between the lifestyle that I live and the lifestyle, as he put it, the Gentiles live? They have no sense of shame. Look around on yourselves. Just look around. This word is as, is as up to date now as it was 2,000 years ago. They have no shame. They live for lust for pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. The child of God 
There got to be a distinction. And guess what? How can there be unity in the body of Christ, seeing that we all are born of the same spirit? We all have the same God. We all have the same hope of glory. But yet, how can, how can there, if we have all of that the same, but yet, if we are living the lifestyle of the world, how can that be unity in the body of Christ? But we, we are called to be lights that shine in darkness. We are called to be different. Are we trying to make ourselves more than anybody else? Of course not. We're just being who God is calling us to be. And guess what? Hold your head up. You don't need to hold your head down. You were called by God. You were called to be a child of God. You were called to be a saint. And, and there is no greater calling by anybody than by Jesus Christ himself. That's awesome. But watch this. Verse 20. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. You didn't learn all that nonsense. You didn't learn that about Christ. So if we didn't learn that about Christ, how can a child of God practice those kind of things? So I'm encouraging you and those of you who have not been born again, you are missing out on a great opportunity to come and live a better lifestyle. Now and then beyond the grave. So, so Jesus Christ is offering us the best of the best. And who would want to miss out on the best of the best? He's making a distinct difference. Watch this. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that come from him. Now, here's another direct statement for us to do. Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life. That's powerful. Throw it off. Now, and we got to do it daily. Someone, you may say, well, pastor, you know, I made a mistake. Yeah, you made a mistake. Have you checked lately to see if you were still human or not? Yeah, I'm still human. All right, then. Get up. Wash yourself off in the, in, in the, with the word of God. Ask God to cover you with his blood. Ask God to forgive you and get in that race and keep on going. Don't let Satan uh, put a guilt trip on you. Let you tell you that you can't be saved. You're not saved. God don't like you. God loves you. He loves you. He knew that you were going to make a mistake. But don't practice making mistakes. Practice doing better. Practice doing better. If you're a human, you are human, you are going to make a mistake. Now, if you are not human, I don't expect you to make a mistake. But you are human. Listen to what Jesus said in, in Luke 9, 23. He said to all of them, whoever wants to be my disciple, do you want to be Jesus Christ's disciple? You want to live with him throughout eternity? You want to have a, a life of peace? You can do that. God is offering you something better. Listen, whoever wants to be my disciple must. Now, this is, these are Jesus' words, now not mine. M-U-S-T. You can't continue that old way of life and expect to be with me. You got to make a difference. He, he said you must deny yourself or themselves take up their cross daily. Why daily? Because every day I'm going to die to something that's not like Christ. Every day I'm going to make new strides. Every day I'm going to meet new challenges. Every day I need Jesus Christ to forgive me. Every day, every day. 
You're not going to be all what God wants you to be in one day, one week, one month, one year. It's a, it's a process. So don't be discouraged. Get up from where you are. Yes, get up from where you are. Don't let Satan uh, beat you down. Jesus Christ loves you, and he wants you, you to spend eternity with him. Listen to what it says. Take up your cross daily and follow me. Daily. Daily. Which is, then it goes on to tell us about the way the enemy lives, which is corrupt by lust and deception. That's how the enemy lives. But now, look at verse 23. Here's an alternative. That word instead. That gives me an alternative. It gives you an alternative. And I love it so much. Instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts. <clears throat> I love that. Instead, let me show you a better way. Let the spirit renew your thoughts. Renew your attitude. Thank you, Jesus. Put on your new nature. Create it to be like God. Think on things that are good and wholesome. Think on things that are honest, pure, and true. Jesus Christ wants you close to him. And he's giving us a way out. He's, he, he's instructing us what to do. Verse 24, put on your new nature, created to be like God, Truly righteous and holy. I found out that living holy, living a righteous life is, is very exciting. You don't have to worry about um, having all kinds of, of hangovers, stupors, and all kind of things like that, all kind of nonsensical drugs in your system, uh, telling all kind of lies to cover up another lie. You know, putting yourself in danger unnecessarily. But do good deeds. You do good, good will come back to you. Uh, living a righteous life is a very interesting and exciting life. It has a lot of rewards. I don't have to worry about, you know, uh, somebody coming to uh, arrest me for stealing something. And all that thing, all kinds of things like that. I can live, I can live a peaceful life. So I'm saying to you, what Jesus Christ is offering is so much far better than what the enemy is offering out there. So he, he's saying instead, he's giving us an alternative. Now watch this. Put on your new nature. And, and, and here's something. Verse 25 spells it out. Stop telling lies. Have you ever seen... <clears throat> Someone calls themselves a Christian, and they lie like a, a rug. Someone calls themselves a Christian, and they hopping from one bed to another one. Someone calls themselves a Christian, cussing like a sailor. What kind of light are we showing? Stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbor the truth. For we are all parts of the same body. Isn't that, isn't that something? Unity in the body of Christ. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Now, how many of you let anger get the best of you? You, you, you blurted out something that you know you shouldn't have said. said. You acted out in such a way that you, that you know you shouldn't have done. Now, now we, we all are humans. There are times that we might find ourselves getting caught up in something like that. But we have to do is ask God to forgive us and be on the lookout next time not to let the enemy push us like that to that extent. We make mistakes. People make mistakes. But God still loves you. Just because you made a mistake, that doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. The enemy will try to make you think God doesn't love you, but he loves you. He forgives. And guess what? We need to love and forgive our brothers and our sisters. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. Can you make up? Can you make up? 
Can you, can, you, can you swallow your pride and go make up? You know, sometimes we, we call ourselves so righteous and so holy. But some of the most uh, basic things we stumble over and we fall flat on our face. A little simple thing. Holding a grudge, holding anger against your brother or sister when God said don't do it. For days and weeks and maybe months. Don't you know you're going to be held accountable for that? So go ahead on and get rid of it. Don't let that be an albatross around your neck, something weighing, weighing you down. No, go ahead on and get rid of it. Because if you don't, you'll find yourself giving Satan a foothold in your life. Well, if I can get them on this, I'll get them on that. So he'll, he'll, he'll try to get a foothold in your life. Then he'll try to find things to hold over your head. And then he's like trying to make you feel guilty. Listen. For anger, watch this, for verse 27, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. If you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, here's a better way. Paul keeps giving us a better way. Instead, use your hands for good, hard work, and then give generously to others in need. You can't give. You can't beat God giving. You give to the poor, you lend it to the Lord. That's a good investment. Don't use foul and abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your, your words will be an encouragement to those who bear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own. And I love this. I love this so much. Jesus Christ identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Now, let me just read this, and I'm going to be coming to a close very shortly, but I want to get this out. Think about this. Jesus Christ guaranteeing. What better guarantee can you get? I remember a long time ago, uh, when I was a child, they had Sears and Roebuck, and they had a guaranteed satisfaction. Guaranteed satisfaction. It built its reputation on guaranteed satisfaction. Jesus Christ, listen to what it says. He has identified us as his own by placing the Holy Spirit in our hearts as the first installment that guarantees everything he has promised us. Thank you, Jesus. But he's asking us to get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, harsh words, and slanders, as well as all types of evil behavior. Thank you, Jesus. How can you say you have the spirit of Christ and, and act or have the attitude of Satan, of the devil? How can we do that? Verse 32 again encourages us. Instead, be kind to each other. Be tenderhearted. Forgiving. Make a conscious effort to release whatever charge you have against a person. Now, it got to be a conscious effort because sometimes you don't feel like forgiving, but it got to go beyond your feeling. You just got to do it. Make a conscious effort to forgive well, uh, am I going to forget it? You may not forget it for a while. But at least one thing, you're not holding that person charged. Even if they don't forgive you, you set them free. Let me just close out with this part. i got to continue. But listen, when you forgive somebody, you're, you're not allowing that person to put you in bondage. You're not allowing that person to determine your destiny. Because if you don't forgive somebody, that's going to be a weight on you. If you don't forgive, that can, that can help shape your destiny. Because we are told that we ought to forgive, just as our Heavenly Father has forgiven us. So I'm saying, don't let anybody have that much influence in your life 
regardless of what they've done to you, that they will determine your destiny or that they will have that much power over your life. No, don't do that. Don't let them have that kind of power. I pray to God today that, that we have said something that would bless your hearts. And we want to continue on with this lesson because there are so many beautiful life lessons that we can, we can glean from the book of Ephesians. It's a powerful book. Six chapters written by the Apostle Paul. But y'all stay tuned because I, I'm hoping you will walk this little journey with me. But I do pray that we say something that will bless you. I, th- I want you to remember that Jesus Christ loves you and he offers the opportunity to be born again of the water and of the spirit so you can have a new life in Christ Jesus and live with him throughout eternity in love and in peace. For your continued growth in God's word, we have in-person school of knowledge at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings, in-school worship on Sunday mornings at 11.30 a.m., and online word empowerment on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Do not forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please share with your friends on Facebook, amen, and others for more information. On the plan of salvation, you may freely call us at 678-759-8989. Let us pray. Gracious Father, may your words, O oh God, find a place in all of our hearts. This we pray and we thank you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen. May God bless you richly.